Multiplying and dividing vulgar fractions is particularly easy. In fact, it's easier than adding or subtracting them. Let's take this one as an example. 3 quarters times 2 fifths. Now, you can read this as 3 quarters of 2 fifths or 2 fifths of 3 quarters. In mathematics, of means times. The next thing is that if you have a numerator over denominator, times numerator over denominator, that means numerator times numerator, so 3 times 2, over denominator times denominator, 4 times 5. That's what I mean here. Numerator over denominator times numerator over denominator is equal to numerator times numerator over denominator times denominator. So what I'm really telling you is that when you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators together and you multiply the denominators together. So here we would have 3 times 2, 6 as the numerator and 4 times 5, 20 as the denominator. And you can reduce this by dividing numerator and denominator by 2 to 3 tenths. Now, I could have reduced the numbers at an earlier stage, and I'm going to show you that, because I will then do that in the remaining examples. What we do is we, again, use the principle of equivalent fractions, that in a fraction, you can divide numerator and denominator by the same amount in order to reduce the numbers, which is what I did at the end, but I could have done it here. So the numerator here is 3 times 2, and the denominator is 4 times 5. And I notice that 2 and 4 can both be halved. That means I could, at this stage, have said divide 2 by 2, which gives a 1, and divide 4 by 2, which reduces it to 2. If I had cancelled at this stage, then I would have skipped this stage completely, because 3 times 1 is 3, and 2 times 5 is 10, and I would have got the final answer quicker. I'll take an example with three fractions. It doesn't make any difference to the method. And I'm also going to skip a couple of steps which are unnecessary now that we know what's going on. And I'm going to look to see if there's any reducing or cancelling that I can do. That way I end up with smaller numbers uh, to work with. So the first thing is I see that my numerators are 2, 5, and 1, and my denominators are 3, 7, and 2. So 2 and 2 can both be divided by 2. And when I divide 2 by 2, I get a 1, so I've reduced it to a 1. And I must do the same thing to the denominator, divide it by 2, and that reduces it also to a 1. Having done that, I can now multiply out the numerators like I did here. I can simply s jump to 1 times 5 times 1, which is 5, and 3 times 7, which is 21, times 1, which is 21. So 2 thirds times 5 sevenths times a half is 5 twenty firsts. Now let's take a look at dividing vulgar fractions. 5 eighths divided by 3 quarters. Division is the inverse of multiplication. So what we do is we invert the second fraction and multiply. So in other words, dividing by 3 quarters is the same as multiplying by 4 thirds. So dividing by 3 quarters is the same as multiplying by the inverse of 3 quarters. 5 eighths times 4 thirds. So this is what you do to divide by a fraction. You invert the fraction, meaning turn it upside down, and multiply by it. Now I'm going to see if there's any cancelling down or reducing that I can do before I multiply out. And I notice that I've got a 4 on top and an 8 on the bottom, and they can both be divided by 4. When I divide 4 by 4, it reduces it to a 1, and when I divide 8 by 4, it reduces it to 2. So remember, with equivalent fractions, you have to divide top and bottom by the same amount. I don't think there's any more cancelling that I can do, so now I multiply out. So for my numerator, I have 5 times 1, which is 5, 
and my denominator is 2 times 3, which is 6. So 5 eighths divided by 3 quarters is 5 sixths. Okay, let's look now at example 4. So to divide by a vulgar fraction, you invert the vulgar fraction and multiply by it. So I have 3 fifths multiplied by not 3 eighths, but 8 thirds. I now look for cancelling. And since I have a 3 on the top and a 3 on the bottom, I can divide top and bottom by 3. And when I do that, it reduces the 3 to a 1. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 3 divided by 3 on the bottom also reduces that 3 to a 1. And I can't reduce any more. So I now multiply out. So on the top, the numerator, I have 1 times 8, which is 8. And on the bottom, the denominator, I have 5 times 1, which is 5. Now, 8 over 5 is called a top-heavy fraction. Another name for it is an improper fraction. So in other words, whenever the numerator is greater than the denominator, it's called top-heavy or improper. And what we normally do is turn it into a mixed number. So 8 fifths would be a whole 1, and then there would be another 3 fifths. So 8 fifths is 1 and 3 fifths. This leads us into what do you do if you had mixed numbers involved in multiplication. So here we have 2 and 3 quarters multiplied by 3 and 5 sixths. What you must do is turn the, any mixed numbers into top-heavy fractions first and then multiply exactly the same as we've been doing up to now. So 2 and 3 quarters as a mixed number. Well, remember, here we have quarters, and here we have two whole. Each whole one would be made up of four quarters. So two wholes would be made up of eight quarters. So that's eight quarters plus another three quarters, making a total of 11 quarters. The way we normally do it, the shorthand way, is to say 4 twos are 8 plus 3 is 11 quarters. So that's 11 quarters. Now, I'll explain the same thing again for 3 and 5 sixths. Each whole one is 6 sixths. So 2 whole ones would be 12 sixths. And 3 wholes, which is what we have here, is 18 sixths. So that's 18 sixths. Add another 5 sixths makes 23 sixths. But the shorthand way of doing that is to say, 6 threes are 18, 18 add 5 is 23, so it's 23 sixths. So multiplied by 23 sixths. Now I look to see if I can cancel, so any common factors between numerators and denominators. Now 11 is prime, 23 is prime, so they don't have any factors other than 1 and themselves, and so I won't be able to reduce this, so I just multiply out. So it's 11 times 23. So if you do 10 times 23 is 230, plus another 23, so that's 253. And the denominator, 4 times 6, is 24. And the answer comes out as a top-heavy fraction, or an improper fraction. So what we should do is convert it into a mixed number. So it's how many 24s go into 253. Well, obviously, 10 24s get you up to 240. And then there's another 13 24s left over. So it's going to be 10 whole and then another 13 24s left over. Let's now do a division involving mixed numbers. 3 and a half divided by 1 and 3 eighths. The first thing is to turn the mixed numbers into top heavy fractions. So 3 and a half each. 1 is 2 halves, so 3 wholes, or 3 ones, is going to be 6 halves, plus the 1 half, which is 7 halves. Or, to do it the quick way, 3 twos are 6 and 1 seven, so it's 7 halves. So that's 7 halves divided by, the whole is 8 eighths, plus another 3 eighths makes 11 eighths. Again, to show you the quick way, 8 ones are 8, plus 3 is 11. So it's 11 eighths. So we have 7 halves divided by 11 eighths. 
which we turn into a multiplication. So that's 7 halves multiplied by not 11 eighths, but 8 elevenths. The next step is to see if we can reduce the numbers, if we can cancel it down before timesing out. We've got a 2 which can be halved to 1, and an 8 which can be halved to 4. So we've reduced top and bottom by 2. There's no more cancelling to be done, so now I multiply out the numerators. 7 times 4, 28. Multiply out the denominators. 1 times 11 is 11. And again, because it's top heavy, I would convert it into a mixed number. So 11 will go into 28 twice. So 2 11s are 22. And there's another 6 11s left over.